All right, people have been evacuated, as you say. Let me uh, pin you down here. What's the worst case scenario at this point? I don't think people even want to go there. You know, you're talking about, as I say, an unprecedented situation here, a heavily nuclear-powered country. This earthquake that, again, almost unprecedented, uh, a massive earthquake causing enormous problems. We've already seen the power outage resulting from the failure at the, at the nuclear plants affecting over a million people. We've seen people evacuated from their homes, so people are being affected already. To get into that sort of speculation, I'm not equipped to do that. The government is issuing the right words at the moment and trying to tell people to stay calm, and they are working on it and working with the International Atomic Agency as well to try to avert any worst-case scenario, Becky. So, so the uh, scene there on the ground, as we know it, to better understand then what is happening at that troubled nuclear power plant in Fukushima, Japan. And this is an important story. We want to turn now to Malcolm Grimston. He's an associate fellow for Energy, Environment and Development at the Chatham House. And he joins me now on the phone from London as we uh, get some pictures up for our viewers of this uh, Fukushima um, prefecture. Just. To your mind, tell us what you believe to be going on there now. Um, I think there's, there's, there's two areas for, for concern, and, and the important thing is whether they are directly linked or not. First is what's happening in the fuel itself, and the levels of contamination within the plant suggest that some of the metal cans that surround the fuel have probably burst, and that's letting some of the radioactive material out into what's called the, uh, the uh, concrete containment. Um, that's been measured for some hours, and that uh, of itself is, is not a, uh, a huge question. Then we've seen the collapse right. of the outside building and the explosion that, uh, uh, that we've been getting pictures of in the last few minutes. Um, now, most of that space is just the empty space where the cranes that do the refueling of the reactor go. Uh, and if, that is, if the explosion there has been uh, caused by some other effects of the, of the uh, tsunami, some chemical uh, explosion or, or uh, the like, and the two aren't directly linked, then it's clearly a serious situation, but uh, that of mm. itself does not necessarily mean major contamination. If they are leaked, if the building is collapsed because of something going on inside the core, maybe as the water is boiled at a very high temperature, some of the water breaks up into separate hydrogen and oxygen, and they can then recombine explosively, uh, then we'd be expecting to be measuring quite high levels of contamination very quickly. So we should soon know from the reports on the contamination levels in the plant whether this is a further complicating factor that's going to have to be dealt with or whether it's a major development in the, in the uh, radioactive consequences of what's happening. And we await that information, of course. And just before we went back onto this map, we were looking at uh, pictures of the uh, Fukuyama Prefecture and the, uh, the uh, nuclear reactors there. And there was an awful lot of white steam coming out from one of those um, facilities. Here it is again for our viewers. don't know if you can see that as we speak. Um, it may not be new to some of our viewers, but for those who've just joined us, it will be. What does that suggest to you? Well, the, we've seen the um, uh, explosion that, that took out the, uh, the, the, outer, the, upper, the upper structure. So now we just have a metal frame where, where it, it looked like the other three, which are still intact on the site. Uh, and whenever there's an explosion of that sort, so they, there, there is a cloud of, of very small particle smoke, which happens for some time. We remember the terrible pictures of 9-11 of, of, uh, uh, in New York, for example, where after the buildings collapsed, there was a very large... Uh, dust cloud. So that of itself is, is it, it need not be more than just what you would expect whenever any structure of that size uh, collapses in that kind of, of way. The question that we don't know about is not so much what's happened above the ground. In most reactors, the working parts are put under the ground. It's what is happening just below the surface, which is of the most concern. Mm. Uh, we'll know that from the contamination. My suspicion is that they'll also try and get a look from above the reactor down into it. This is what happened at Chernobyl. Quite a lot of information was gathered by looking down through that, that building. There's, there's, ironically, with the, the outer building out of the way, there's a little opportunity here to get some more information of what's happening sure. at ground and below ground level. But inevitably, this is just speculation at the moment. We just don't have the information to be, uh, I don't have the information well, to say anything more precise. Well, as we get it, I'm hoping that you'll uh, stay with us through the morning. Uh,